Oh, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. Today, of course, we're doing a fun little new deck. Uh, probably weird, a little jank, for sure, but totally get there. Uh, before we do, though, go and remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much for it. The link will be down below. And today's deck is called Strike as One. And it is definitely, we're testing out Wynota, the joiner of forces. And it's very convoluted and horrible, but we'll see if we can get it to work. <laughs> oh, so what is Wynota? Or Wynota Rider, maybe, probably. They should just draw her in. Anyways, two red and a white human warrior, even though she has cat ears, which doesn't make sense. Uh, whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a human creature from the card among them in the battlefield tapped and attacking. The game's indestructible until in a turn. Put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library at a random order. Now, there's a lot of things that can go wrong here. One, you need a non-human to trigger her. So if you just draw all humans, then she's just a 4-4 four, four for 4, which isn't too bad, but it's standard, right? So there's a lot of powerful things at 4. And then, of course, <clears throat> when you swing, you might not get a human, because you might get all your spells and non-creature cards. So, you know, we will see. But it is per non-human so whatever multiple things of non-human swinging you get a trigger for each one so you might just have a bunch of dudes slamming in all, all at once and you do get to dig six deep so it's it could get there yeah it, it could get there but we all know how to swift on a, a coco for sure because yeah. i've done that plenty of times the next guy we got is the knight of the ebon legion he is one black for a one two vampire knight and he at the beginning of your instep if the player lost four more life this turn put a one one counter on him and then you can pay three, and he gets plus three, plus three, and gains that touch until the end of turn. Yeah, he's just a super cheap uh, non-human, and that he can pump himself to deal damage. And the beginning of the game, the late game, he's just super powerful no matter what, for sure. Now, th this guy to help, General's Enforcer. It's a white and a black human soldier. Legendary humans you control have indes indestructible. So if you can swing with Wynota and plop him down, then boom, she doesn't die. Uh... Also has an awesome ability, two black and a white. Exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. So, you know, just extra bonus for that, for sure. Next up is the Hushbringer. It is a white and one for a 1-2 flying lifelink fairy. And she in, and creatures enter the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. Yeah. So all of your silly enter the play triggers, I don't want you to have them. Yeah, none of that. Uh, all the weird mute stuff and all the all things are very powerful. This will hopefully put those decks to its knees. Now there is a no bow in this deck, but there's also a super combo with this deck with her. So yeah, whatever. And again, a cheap non-creature, non-human creature. Yeah. General uh, Kudro, or the Janareth, one white, black, three, three. Other humans can control have plus one, plus one. Whenever... An this one or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from your opponent's graveyard. Then you can pay two, sacrifice two humans, destroy target creature with power four or greater. Now, of course, with the uh, tokens that you can create with those, kills a bigger dude, or the fact that uh, you can get rid of the graveyard and then Hushbringer stops them from entering playability, so you kind of have like a synergistic to just tell them no as much as you can. So there's a lot of weird combos like that. Next up is Judith, the Scourge Diva. It is a 1 and a black and a red. Other creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0. Oh. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, she deals 1 damage to any one target. Yep. So there's the no bow right there for sure, but to just pump up your team and swing, you don't even care. And the fact if all, most of every single human on here is legendary. So with the general, makes it where, you know, nothing dies, hopefully. The next one is Tajik, Legion's Edge. It's one red and a white, three, two, haste. It has Mentor, if you forgot what that does. When this creature attacks, put a one, one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Simple as that. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. And then if need be, you can pay a red and a white. It gains first strike until end of turn. This dude is a powerful card. Yeah. And it has haste by itself, so it's also super awesome. Yeah. Next up is Hactos the Unscarred. It is red, red, white, white for a 6 1 legendary creature. He is a human. When he, he attacks each combat if able and he enters the battlefield, you choose 2, 3, or 4 at random. He has protection from each convert mana cost other than the chosen number. Yep. And this is where the combo with Hushbringer comes in because since 
the Hakdos inner ability and the protection ability is separated, the inner ability doesn't trigger. So therefore, there's no random number. Therefore, he has protection from everything, which is awesome. So That's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, with Hushbringer, he's a six-one. Uh, uh, Palergenitus, what is that stupid dragon card? Progenitus. Progenitus, thank you. That has protection from everything and just swings for six. So, there you go. And then that that is the creatures for sure. And as you can tell, there's a cute little combination of all three that's kind of hard to do. But to help with the creatures and uh, the humans and non-humans, we have fight as one. It's one white instant. Choose one or both. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, gains indestructible. And then non-human creature gets the same abilities. So... You can help protect your dudes while swinging for sure. Next up is Dire Tactics. It's a white and a black for an instant exile target creature. If you don't control a human, you lose life equal to the creature's toughness. It's very powerful for cheap, how cheap it is. Yeah, it's a very good kill spell. Yeah, especially it's exile. Now, here's the red one. Forbidden Friendship. It's one in a red sorcery. Create a 1-1 one, one red dinosaur creature token with haste, and then 1-1 one, one white human soldier cr creature token. So, even if you don't have a creature when... Why not hits the field? Then you play this next turn with a haste dude and swing and go all out. So it helps with that. Next up is Bedevil. It's black, black, and red for an instant. Destroy target artifact, creature, or planeswalker. It is one of the best kill spells in standard right now. Yeah. And as you can tell, this is my favorite color combination because it has the best kill for sure. Which is because it has Mortify. One white and a black instant. Destroy target creature or enchantment. Because you need that. Yeah, you definitely need that. Next is Mythos of Snapped Axe. It is two white and two for a sorcery. Each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker that erect from them. any non-land permanents they control, then sacrifices the rest. If red and a black was spent to cast a spell, you choose the permanents for each player instead. Yeah, so we only have one of these, but that's just in case, like, the oh no, hit the red button, let's wipe the board kind of thing, for yeah. sure. And you're going to hopefully have the color so you can make sure they keep their uh, crappiest creature. The next one is Elspeth Conquers Death. It's three and two white. And it's an amazing enchantment saga. First chapter, exile target permanent opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater, which is almost everything. Uh, second chapter is non-creature spells your opponent's cost cast cast cost two more of the cast until the next turn. Third chapter, return target creature or planeswalker card from the graveyard of the battlefield, put a wall one counter on it, or a little two counter. So Hopefully you just bring back Wynota to start building up your board again or whatnot. Or yeah. whatnot. And then with that, that is the deck. Uh, of course, with the lands, we have Blood Crypts, uh, Fable Passage to get all your other stuff, Godly Shrines, uh, Mountain, Plains, Swamp, Sacred Foundry, which is the red-white uh, stone. And then, of course, we have the new one, uh, Savvy Triome. It's a uh, Mountains, Plains, and Swamp, but it comes into play tapped, but it taps for all three colors, so... That's amazing, and hopefully it'll help you get there for sure. Uh, that That is the deck. I hope it works. I don't know. It seems pretty good. I, I'm pretty excited to see it play. Yep. And check for it on Arena for next week, or if you are on our Patreon, we're starting to make it where the, the, the Arena gameplay of the footage comes out the same day, so therefore you can see how it goes. But with that, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island, and you have a good day. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all the future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.